Electricity is foundation of our modern society. Almost everything requires electricity to be able to function. Net consumption of electricity worldwide in 2018 was about 23,398 billion kilowatt hours or 23,398 terawatt hours. Different methods can be used to generate electricity to supply the humanity's demand. The most common ones are thermal power plants which use fossil fuels to create electricity, followed by nuclear power plants and renewable energy. Each technique has its advantages and drawbacks, but they have one thing in common, and that is they have been used for a long time to create electricity without considering new or better methods to replace them. The techniques that can give us infinite and abundant electricity without causing environmental footprint that would damage Earth ecosystem. Scientists have been for decades discussing a new approach to generate plentiful electricity without causing harm to the environment. In the past, many considered it science fiction. However, in recent years, with progresses in technology, the technique has again come to a spotlight, and it is called fusion energy. The sun and other stars are generating their energy by nuclear fusion. The energy is the essence of stars to survive. Imagine having that energy created here on Earth. The benefits of it would be enough to create infinite and abundant electricity for the humanity. There is the word between scientists that says the fusion energy is 30 years away and always will be, referring to the fusion energy as a science fiction, which would never happen. However, with current progress in technology, advancements in creating energy using novel techniques, and better understanding of fusion power's physics, the aperture for putting the fusion energy on the grid has widened drastically, and we could see the first practical experiment for the energy to happen within a couple of years. But what exactly is fusion energy? As the word fusion suggests, the nuclear reaction combines two or more atomic nuclei to create one or more distinct atomic nuclei and sometimes subatomic particles. Energy is released by the fusion of light elements which is caused by interplay of two opposing forces. Protons and neutrons are held together in the nucleus by the strong nuclear force, and Coulomb force causes positively charged protons to repel each other. In order to release the energy in the form of radiation and emission of subatomic particles, the strong force at the very short distance scales of atomic nucleus dominates Coulomb repulsion to attach the protons and neutrons together. This results to fusing of small nuclei and subsequently increasing the strong force nuclear binding. Fusion fuels have energy density of about a million times higher than fossil fuels and also way superior energy density compared to other chemical methods. This is due to the fact that the energy of chemical processes is infiltrated and affected by nuclear binding forces far more powerful than the forces that keep electrons together around the nucleus. Stars like our Sun are powered by proton-to-proton -proton fusion in which it takes billions of years for this gravity-powered reaction to complete. That is because it needs colossal densities. Needless to say, this method would definitely not work for fusion energy production on Earth. Instead, other methods can be employed that require lower densities 
but with far higher temperatures. With increasing the temperature to about 150 million degrees Celsius and higher, and confining it, enough speed can be produced for nuclei collision in order to overcome Coulomb repulsion and for the fusion to occur. One of the most prominent and feasible methods to produce fusion energy is the deuterium-tritium reaction. The deuterium-tritium reaction, abbreviated DT, would be the most practical option to utilize in order to create fusion power. This is because of the fact that DT releases the highest energy in comparison with other laboratory feasible reactions. The high energy release of reaction can easily overcome the Coulomb repulsion. Deuterium and tritium are both isotopes of hydrogen. However, at the moment, most of the fusion experiments are being focused on deuterium to deuterium reaction due to some limitations of tritium. Those drawbacks include the scarcity of tritium on Earth, with approximately 20 kg of tritium being available on our planet. Scientists must be very cautious about generously and lavishly using this precious source of fusion energy. Therefore, they have to first test other methods which in this case is deuterium to deuterium reaction and then extrapolate the outcomes to DT. Moreover, the intensity of energy and radioactivity produced by tritium has to be handled properly. Hence, it is essential to make sure that the energy can be confined properly to avoid any loss of energy which could be harmful and wasteful and also to harness as much fusion power as possible to be able to put the electricity produced by it on the grid. In regard to confining and harnessing the fusion energy, an apparatus must be used to be conveniently able to withstand extremely high temperatures and severe energy reactions. For that purpose, a torus-shaped object called tokamak must be employed. Tokamak was created in 1950s by two Russian physicists, Andrei Sakharov and Igor Tam. The Tokamak's name derived from the Russian acronym for Toroidal Confinement Machine. Tokamak's durability must be capable of resisting DT fusion's extremely energetic neutron produced during deuterium tritium reaction with released neutron energy of 14.1 mega electron volt, more tritium can be created during DT fusion. This can cause extreme pressure on the tokamaks, hence it is essential that they are built in a way to endure the powerful energy. In addition to that, approximately one-fifth of DT reaction's energy is taken by generating a helium nucleus. The helium nucleus is vital for sustaining the fusion operation in a fusion reactor. The nucleus energy is shared with the encompassing ions and keeping them hot. In order to generate electricity utilizing fusion energy, handful of methods are available. However, Scientists and researchers in the field of energy have come to an agreement and conclusion that magnetic confinement is the most practical and promising method to create abundant electricity. Thus, tokamak as the magnetic confinement device is the most suitable to create the electricity. Magnetic confinement technique creates an ionized stew of charged particles called plasma. By separating electrons from their nuclei, which is the result of heating confined hydrogen gas. But how tokamak is able to generate and preserve the confining magnetic field? Tokamak requires three lines of magnets. Those are external coils, the central solenoid, 
amploidal coils. Toroidal magnetic field is made by external coils which are located around the ring of tokamak and parallel to the circumference of the torus. Generating toroidal current within the plasma is function of the central solenoid by using a very strong pulse of energy. As a result, a second ploidal magnetic field would be made through the movement of ions with toroidal current. Lastly, the location and form of plasma are controlled by ploidal coils which are located around the circumference of the torus. The ionized particles are confined in variety of orbits within and around tokamak by an array of nested flux surfaces that are formed by the alignment and arrangement of three aforementioned magnetic fields. As a result, tokamak can attain very high temperatures. Thanks to the strength of the magnetic fields, the plasma particles are tied to the fields preventing the scorching and hottest parts of the plasma to reach the walls of tokamak, creating insulating effect within the toroidal apparatus. In order to induce fusion, the insignificant magnetic confinement and certain amount of heat are created by the induced plasma current. However, those are not enough to persuade fusion. In addition to them, Microwaves and particle beams provide extra heating required to inducing fusion energy. Feasibility and practicality of tokamak to create fusion energy depend on one important factor, the value known by scientists as fusion gain, which is recognized by the letter Q. The fusion gain states that to impel fusion reaction the tokamak must be able to generate more fusion power than heating energy required to start the reaction. In other words, the heating energy is the cost of generating the fusion power and if less fusion energy created compared to the heat used to generate it, then the fusion power created will be impractical and infeasible. Q equal to 1 shows the break-even point, which is equilibrium ratio of fusion power to input power or heat in order to maintain a reaction. However, due to heat losses during the process of reaction, Q should approximately be equal to 5 to achieve burning plasmas. Currently, by utilizing DT reactions, tokamak has been able to reach Q value of about 0.6. However, for the fusion power to be economic, fusion power plants have to achieve Q values of 10 or above. Researchers, scientists, and engineers in the field have already started constructing the biggest fusion power plant called International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER, in southern France. In the next part, ITER and few other important fusion energy power plants under development will be introduced and explained in more details. The concept of constructing ITER fusion reactor was initiated in November 1985 by Soviet Union Secretary Mikhail Gorbachev when he proposed an international collaboration to US President Ronald Reagan on fusion energy. Two years later, in 1987, the ITER agreement was signed by the United States, European Union, Soviet Union and Japan. This agreement would allow beneficiary countries to have equal access to fusion power and its technology. These countries invested a portion of cost to build the fusion plant, with the United States paying about 9% of the total costs. With lots of delays, finally in 2001, an engineering design consensus occurred between the participant countries. 
Three more countries were added to the ITER agreement. Two of them were China and South Korea, joined in 2003, and subsequently India joined the rest of the countries in 2005. With joining of these three countries, seven member groups consist of 35 nations were created and this coalition named ITER as the largest multinational scientific project ever created by the mankind. ITER is the proof of concept, meaning that it is being merely built to be a testbed for future nuclear fusion power plants. Different criteria will be experimented by the fusion power plant. Those include testing fusion technologies such as tritium breeding, plasma control, advanced diagnostics, and disruption mitigation. Moreover, required safety features of future power plants will be examined by the ITER fusion nuclear plant, with construction cost of $30 billion shared by 35 nations, more than two-thirds of ITER development has been completed. The location of the fusion power plant is in saint paul le douance southern France. The reactor weighs about 23,000 tons and millions of its components are being shipped from all 35 nations to France. ITER's central solenoid is being manufactured by the company in the United States called General Atomics. The central solenoid consists of six modules, which the first of them was sent to France in summer 2020. Alongside that, another massive component known as cryostat with diameter of 30 meters is being built by an Indian manufacturer. The central solenoid used in ITER's tokamak will power the strongest pulsed superconducting magnet that ever constructed, which will result in tokamak with the largest and highest magnetic field in the world. This 1000 ton magnet will employ 36 kilometers of superconducting cable that will be used to steer 15 million amperes of current through the plasma, and this will be the first time something this powerful achieved. ITER's tokamak radius is 6.2 meters and has plasma volume of 840 cubic meter. The features created for ITER differentiated from current tokamak's technologies and capabilities. ITER's tokamak will be the first of its kind to be utilized to analyze and experiment the effects and outcomes of maintaining the fusion reaction and the process of self-heating. Moreover, generating a burning plasma will make this toroidal apparatus the first one to be able to achieve this success. As previously noted, the fusion gain or Q must be at least the value of 10 or above to be considered practical and feasible an ITER will be able to attain the value of 10. Employing DT fusion, ITER will input 50 megawatts of energy and will generate 500 megawatts of fusion energy, which equals the value of 10, annihilating the current award record of Q value of 0.67 achieved by Joint European Taurus or JET in 1997. If everything goes according to plan, ITER will start operating in 2025. For the duration of 10 years, the fusion reactor will be generating energy from low-power hydrogen reactions. These 10 years serve as a testing and inspection phase for scientists to discover interdisciplinary and integrative approach tackling several engineering disturbance and problems that may arise during the process of generating fusion power. This procedure is all possible due to the creation of machine learning systems and artificial intelligence, which play pivotal roles in scaling fusion systems 
by powering the essential simulations. After this 10-year cycle, and by collecting enough data and information, the hydrogen fuel-based system will transform into DT fusion reactor that is scheduled to generate fusion energy using deuterium tritium in 2035. However, there will be other fusion power plants set to start generating fusion energy within this and next decade. Few of the important projects will be mentioned in the next part of this video. The SPARC is a fusion energy reactor project that is under development by MIT and is being constructed by a spin-off company, Commonwealth Fusion Systems. A SPARC is going to be built in 2021 in a location in Devens, Massachusetts, with fraction of the cost of ITER. Commonwealth Fusion Systems estimates that the cost of building the reactor would be about $500 million at the time of creating this video. Almost $200 million have been collected from investors, and many more of them are willing to fund this project. Spark started in 2018. At that time, the spin-off firm CFS was founded. The company wanted to create a nuclear fusion reactor that is smaller, more efficient, and far less costly than ITER. The firm's plan is to start generating fusion energy in 2025. The technological features that a Spark has makes it a better candidate compared to ITER to generate the fusion energy that can be put on the grid. One of these features is having a smaller size compared to ITER. A spark reactor can be fit inside a tennis or basketball court, whereas ITER is so massive that it is being constructed on a 180 hectares field in southern France and 42 hectares of it is allocated to a multi-level platform for its tokamak. To give a better understanding of how big this 42 hectare nuclear reactor is, is that up to 60 soccer fields can fit inside this scale. Now to compare the size of tokamaks, a Sparks tokamak diameter is 3 meters. On the other hand, Ether's tokamak is over 12 meters across. Thus, a Sparks tokamak can be maintained and controlled more comfortably. Despite the Sparks smaller tokamak size, it will be able to produce Q of 10 or higher, thanks to the advancements made in superconductors. This tokamak contains newest version of superconductors known as high temperature superconductors that can produce very strong magnetic field that would fit inside a smaller torus due to the fact that the plasma is much smaller. In contrast, ITER employs the older technology for superconductors that are within massive electromagnetic coils and in order to function properly these superconducting wires must be cooled by liquid helium. Also thanks to superconducting rare earth barium copper oxide wires developed by the researchers in the last decade, a spark will be able to generate 20 tesla magnetic field compared to 11.8 tesla field generated by ITER. Moreover, it is estimated that a spark can generate up to 1000 megawatts of electricity which is higher than ITER's. These numbers attest that a spark will be a winner when it comes to the future of fusion energy. And to validate a spark even more, so far, during the development process of the project, scientists and researchers have not yet confronted by any major impediment and hurdle that might have hindered the fusion reactor from progress. These have raised hope within the scientific community 
that we can see the project comes to fruition in the near future. In 2025, when a spark is going to be tested, it will only be able to create heat, not electricity. However, in 2025, after a spark have been built and tested by the scientists, the Commonwealth Fusion Systems will be going to start building its next project called Affordable Robust Compact or ARC. ARC will be the first ever commercialized fusion plant to generate electricity that will be going to be used by humanity. Another interesting and significant project currently in development is from a private company in the UK called Tokamak Energy. The company was established in 2009 for the purpose of developing compact fusion power. The firm is a spin-off of the world-leading fusion research center at Coulham Laboratory near Oxford, which has more than 40 years of experience in research and development of fusion energy. Tokamak Energy manufactured a spherical shaped tokamak called ST40 and it was able to achieve temperatures higher than the center of the sun in 2018. However, the target of the device is to reach temperatures higher than 100 million degrees in the coming month. If this goal is achieved, it will make the Tokamak Energy the first private company that has been able to reach this milestone. ST40 Tokamak, unlike ITER and SPARK, has more a spherical shape rather than toroidal form used in those devices. It is equipped with the state-of-the-art power supplies and plasma heating systems. Despite the fact that the company is privately owned, the UK's government has granted investments for the development of this project. ST40 will work towards the UK's plan to become a global hub for fusion innovation. General Fusion is a company located in Vancouver, British Columbia, which is financially backed by Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos and corporations such as Microsoft. The company has been using a method called Magnetized Target Fusion or MTF technology to generate fusion power, which was developed in 1970s and was first initiated by the US Naval Research Lab. According to General Fusion's website, more than 200,000 hydrogen plasma tests have been done to collect measurement information and data about the factors such as magnetic field, density, and temperature. These tests, which is done about 100 times per day, have been only possible thanks to the supercomputers and data analytics that are capable of agile and quick interpretation of the measurements data, which in result optimize performance by prompt alteration in test programs. Moreover, virtual plasma tests are reproduced by developing simulations that utilize the aforementioned data. Researchers in general fusion use these simulations as the blueprint to develop and design the largest privately funded MTF prototype in history named Fusion Demonstration Plant or FDP. The plant will be used to display how the technology works and what will achieve in an environment based on fusion reactor. Also, 3D printing technology will be used to construct a component of fusion apparatus which is called cavity formation. The technology will be utilized to make this part due to the fact that building it with conventional methods would be architecturally extremely challenging and also would be very costly. The technique used by General Fusion, magnetized target fusion, is somewhat technologically different compared to aforesaid fusion power plants. 
In order to generate fusion energy, the plasma within the 3 meter sphere used by general fusion will be pressurized to superheat the plasma. In this method, a tank of liquid metal will be spinned until a cavity is formed. Afterwards, a hydrogen plasma is injected into the cavity and then the plasma will be compressed by pistons and heated to temperatures higher than 100 million degrees Celsius. This action results in creating energy in the form of heat by fusing hydrogen atoms. The outcome will be generating fusion energy and all of the compression process happens very quickly and in milliseconds. The liquid metal walls would be heated by the fusion reaction and by extraction of the heat from the metal, the steam will be created to propel and move a turbine in order to generate electricity. So far, there is not a definite date to start experimenting the magnetized target fusion. However, General Fusion expects that sometime in 2025, they will start testing the fusion power plant. There are a handful of other nuclear fusion energy projects all around the world. However, the four stated projects would suffice for this topic. Now let's take a look at challenges and current technology limitations that might be the impediments for generating electricity from fusion energy. Also, the benefits and advantages of fusion energy will be discussed. There are some challenges and limitations that must be overcome in order to make the fusion energy feasible for commercial use and creating electricity for the human civilization. Most of the hurdles for generating fusion energy are in regard to engineering aspects of the technology rather than scientific ones. However, there are some conundrums in physics contexts that should be researched and investigated. Confining a fusion plasma inside a magnetic field is a major difficulty in the process of creating fusion energy. Fluctuations in fusion plasma's pressure, temperature, and density can inverse the magnetic field outward or result in leakage. Quality of plasma confinement is a factor that plays a fundamental role in determining the cost effectiveness of a fusion power plant. It is defined as the time required to lose energy to the vessel walls. Suitable level of fusion can be maintained by keeping ions hot enough. This is being dependent on plasma confinement duration to provide long enough time to allow sufficient plasma energy to flow in the confined region. Confinement times of approximately 0.3 seconds have been achieved by conventional devices. However, it is essential for fusion power plants to achieve times of few seconds and it should be theoretically possible utilizing larger and stronger magnetic fields. Reducing capital costs has been connected to the confinement quality. Recent research and studies have shown that confinement quality has a decisive and direct impact on the size of the tacomac as well as other substantial factors such as the handling of heat and particle loads. Consequently, in order to reduce these costs, further research to develop higher quality confinement solutions is of great importance. The materials used in tokamaks must be able to withstand constant high temperatures and particle bombardments. DT fusion produces the neutron radiation that is energetically far greater than the one generated by nuclear fission. Nuclear fission is conventional nuclear reactor used to create electricity. Moreover, 
During the operation of generating fusion energy, helium created by reaction, excess heat, as well as other impurities, have to be removed continuously. Available materials and technologies would have a very hard time to tolerate the constant pressure, energy and power in the lifetime of commercial fusion power plant. In order to tackle this issue, new alloys, better quality materials and liquid surfaces must be developed by scientists to be able to carry on without encountering problems for the very long period of time that fusion reactor would be going to supply the electricity. As already mentioned, tritium is very scarce in nature, unlike deuterium, which is far more abundant in the environment. Hence, in order to have access to more tritium, they must be manufactured, which will cost a lot. For instance, 50 kilograms of tritium fuel should be used on a yearly basis for 500 megawatt power plant to function. By looking at current global tritium production capacity of about 2 to 3 kilograms per year, generating electricity by fusion reaction would be an impossible endeavor. Also add to that the cost factor and billions of dollars is required to make a single fusion reactor functional, which makes this method infeasible and impractical. Therefore, the technique is required to breed tritium in situ. And fortunately, tritium creation during the fusion reaction can be a possibility in the near future. Researchers have been working on a method to wrap around the tokamak by lithium blanket in order to capture fusion neutrons by lithium nuclei and automatically convert and transform them into tritium. But these challenges are outweighed by benefits and advantages fusion energy brings to the table. One of the most important reasons that make fusion power a worthy successor for generating electricity is that fusion reaction does not release CO2 or carbon dioxide into the environment. Unlike the power plants that use fossil fuels to generate energy, there is zero harmful and detrimental environmental consequences using fusion energy. Fusion energy would be continuously made during the process of generating electricity without needing external fuel such as gas or oil. This would help many countries that struggle with high level of CO2 in their atmosphere. For example, producing electricity by fossil fuels in Canada resulted in producing huge amount of nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide emissions, which contributed to a smog, acid rains, and formation fine particulate matter. On top of that, fossil fuels resources are finite, and one day the earth will run out of them. Therefore, a more civil and advanced method of energy production must replace fossil fuels sooner than later. Regarding the renewable energies such as wind and solar, they also come with limitations that have made them not the best techniques of generating electricity. Wind farms, as one of the most notable methods of generating energy, has disrupted the ecosystem in some ways such as interrupting and jeopardizing birds' migration patterns. In case of solar energy, the high price of solar panels makes it an unappealing choice to produce electricity, and to add insult to injury, it is horrendously inefficient to generate electricity, despite it being very expensive. Moreover, both of wind and solar energy have lots of idle time for producing energy due to the environmental conditions. For instance, lack of wind for windmills or overcast and nighttime for solar energy 
would definitely bring generating energy by these methods to a complete halt. Thus, having a method to generate electricity at any time and condition will help creating energy more economic, feasible and practical. This is when fusion energy can be the best option. Finally, comparing the fusion power to fission nuclear energy will be the conclusive case in superiority of fusion energy. Nuclear fission main problems are limited fuels and production of radioactive waste which would take thousands of years to cool down and guess where the most waste is going to be stored? In underground repositories in where, if leakage happens, it will cause massive environmental problems. In addition to that, fuel for nuclear fission plants is being stored at collection facilities. In contrast, fusion power plants do not need any collection facilities and the fuel for nuclear fusion will be produced during the process of generating energy and that will automatically be recycled within tokamak device without any waste being disposed during the time electricity is being generated. Moreover, there will be no chance of nuclear meltdown in fusion plants due to the fact that any shock or damage that may happen during fusion reaction would transform the hot plasma to regular gas. The dawn of fusion energy can be started as soon as 2025 when first experimental fusion power plants will be beginning to test generating electricity. Since the time fusion power's idea commenced, fusion scientists and researchers have been working tirelessly to make nuclear fusion a reality, the dream that has unremittingly been envisioned and pondered numerous times by scientists in order to make it a potential energy generator of the future. In retrospect, the first experimental fission nuclear plant started to be tested in the 1940s. It was until almost two decades later, in the mid-1960s, that large-scale construction of commercial nuclear power plant was begun. This exemplar is also applied to nuclear fusion for this novel prominent technology to become commercially available a period of time must be allocated in order to test different scenarios and aspects of the technique to make sure that generating electricity from the fusion energy is in accordance with physics and engineering rules. Also, organizations such as Nuclear Regulatory Commission in USA or other counterpart structures in different countries must set new rules and update their current regulations to provide the fusion nuclear energy a smoother path to become widely available and accepted worldwide. The speed to change and upgrade rules and laws in these organizations are all up to the people in the field of fusion to familiarize regulators with perks and advantages of fusion energy. One of the most important approaches for this to happen is to start as soon as possible with experimental fusion power plants and also construct a smaller sized and economical fusion reactors to pragmatically demonstrate the superiority of the fusion energy. Economic and social factors have to be the biggest obstacles in the way of fusion energy. To convince investors to put money into the fusion nuclear power is to show the advantages of the technology and how can be economically feasible to be used in larger scale nuclear projects. Of course, the projects mentioned in this video have been receiving a massive amount of funds from investors. However, Many more nuclear fusion plans and designs can come into existence if more people knowing the fusion and have been convinced that it could be a worthy replacement for fission nuclear and other methods of generating electricity. 
Regarding social factor of fusion energy, many people in the public do not know the difference between fusion and fission and might even confuse them. This is due to the fact that fusion nuclear power has not been sufficiently promoted by the governments and scientists in the field of fusion energy. Many people's mentality is tarnished by the catastrophes that happened in fission nuclear plants, the most notable one, Chernobyl disaster. However, it is proven that fusion nuclear plants are very safe and also nuclear accidents in fission plants were very rare because even fission is one of the safest methods of generating energy, safer than any fossil fuel power plant. Starting generating electricity by experimental fusion power plants and promoting fusion power more effectively will be the crucial steps towards achieving the public acceptance for fusion energy. Having said that, two important circumstances will be happening within a couple of decades that will be the decisive factors in success of fusion power. One of them is that many fission power plants in US will have their license period ended within 20 years and that will be around 2040. That will be the time when many fusion power plants can start generating electricity. This will be a good opportunity to utilize the fusion power in the energy sector. Another reason that might help to the success of fusion energy is net zero carbon emissions target that have been set by many countries as one of the most essential goals to be achieved in order to obliterate global warming. By ever increasing advancements in fusion technology and having definitive timeline of fusion energy's starting dates, we can certainly expect fusion energy to become a reality in the foreseeable future.